Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Fifty Two. In this very episode, we are going to talk about the power of commitment. So wherever you consume the content, if you can、uh, subscribe it, share with your friends, and maybe rate this podcast either on、uh, Spotify or Apple Podcast, I would really appreciate it. So yes, let's talk about the power of、uh, commitment today. So in Second Timothy chapter four verse seven, this is what Paul was saying to Timothy, and he said. I have fought the good fight. I finished the race, and I kept the faith. Just think about it. Those three powerful words. Paul said he had fought the good fight, and he had finished the race, and he kept the faith.、So、these are very encouraging and very motivated. So basically, Paul he finished what he was born to do, and he knew exactly. What he was aiming and what his target was, and I think that's very、uh, important. So, yeah. So, and it wasn't easy for him to、uh, keep the faith. There's a time when he have to face certain things, and it's not easy for him to、uh, finish the race. You know, when you we all know that when you run a race or a marathon,、um, you either wanted to give a half of the weight. But that's not what Paul、uh, is saying. He finished the course. He finished it well. So, in Matthew chapter sixteen, verse twenty-four, this is what Jesus said to his disciple: Whoever want to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. So, in here we see three words, and I wanted to point out three things in here. The first one is that if you really want to be,、uh, A disciple, if you want to be a follower of Christ, the first thing that you have to do, or we have to do, is deny ourselves. So, what does it mean to deny ourselves? So, deny to deny ourselves is to set aside our own pleasure and comfort.、Um, and so, basically, what that meant is to sacrifice. To sacrifice, and in life you can't have anything without sacrifice. And another word is that take out the cross or take out your cross. So what does it mean to take up our cross? So to take up our cross is to find our purpose, to find the reason for God placing us on this earth. So that's what the purpose is about. Ah,、uh, that's what take out our Take up our cross meant means is to、uh, to find our purpose, and the last one is follow me. Follow me. So, what does ha- what do we have to do with follow follow me? So, what does that mean? So, to follow me is to follow through、uh, on your decision until they are complete. So, we had to make a decision. That is to ah、uh, that is also called a determination. So we have to determine to follow him. You know, Jesus calling a lot of people, but only a few are willing to make a bold decision to follow him. So, is here is very clear and simple. If we want to be、uh, a disciple, the first thing we have to do is we have to、uh, deny ourselves, which is to、uh, sacrifice ourselves. And then to take out our cross is to find out our purpose and to、um, to search for our purpose and to ask God for it. And the last one is to follow Him. Well, it's basically, is to、uh, make a decision. And if we can apply this in life, I think it will be so effective and so、um, meaningful. So, yeah, being committed to follow Christ is not easy. After time, you will find yourself alone, and、uh, that is very, very true. When you stand for God, you will find yourself alone. And、uh, after saying that, if you look at Rahab, the 
harlot or the prostitute in the Bible. She has, when she learned about that Israel was coming and God was with them and God was able to perform so many uh, miracles in their life. And Rahab knew that God is going to do a complete uh, miracle and God is going to destroy the city of Jericho. And but in the midst of that, uh, Rahab uh, risks her life to rescue those two spy and they made a deal and it wasn't easy for her she has to stand up again her name and her culture and where she uh belongs so but in the end you know um uh, she was rewarded her name came up in the lineage of jesus generation so in jesus lineage so uh, that is very uh amazing so when you're committed to something um you will find yourself alone especially if you are committed to follow christ you will definitely find yourself alone so what is what is it like to be a uh to be a committed person so there's a story in 1945 or 1944 1945 there's a story about uh the kamikaze when uh japanese fought uh they used kamikaze uh yeah, they they kind of uh, not yeah, um, uh, sent out a kamikaze pilot. So what is kamikaze pilot uh has to do? What they have to do is that they have to be on a mission, which is only one mission, and basically it's a suicide bomber. Okay, so there's no turning back. So the thing is that kamikaze pilots are only useful if they are committed to their mission. Their mission is to attack with their plane, uh, uh, to attack the ship with their plane. So yeah, that is their mission. So if we find ourselves being involved, it's not the same as being committed. So when you are committed, you will be more uh, affected. So that's what, uh, that is the story of uh, Kamikaze. So, and then um, later on, they found out that Kamak uh, there's a survival of Kamikaze pilot. And then, um, but you can't really say he's a Kamikaze pilot if he is a survivor. Because a true Kamikaze pilot would, Every single one of them will die. And when they ask him in the interview, this kamikaze pilot, uh, re, re, this is what, uh, this is his response. Well, I was very involved, but not committed, but very involved. And this is another thing that I wanted to point out. Being involved and being committed is totally two different things. As I said earlier, a true kamikaze pilot only flies on one mission. He cannot be involved without being committed. And if you are committed, you will have to deny uh, your emotion or we will have to deny. We will have to deny our emotion and we will have to be committed. And uh, that is the difference between involvement and uh, commitment. Now the day, if you look around, people would rather choose to be uh, involved rather than commitment. So just look at it. Even in in the United States, there's a say that uh, fifty percent of people in the U.S. they are divorced. Uh, fifty percent of the marriage in the U.S. end up being divorced. So just think about it. They're very involved, but they're not very committed. A true biblical marriage is that. Um, you um, you marry for one, and that partner should be your life partner, not just your temporary partner. You know, and yeah, that is what is it like to be a uh, commitment. And there's an illustration that I really like, and this is uh, between a pig and a chicken. So the chicken um uh, told the pig, "Hey pig, we should open a restaurant." And then the the pig was like, "I'm not sure." What will, what will we call it? And then uh, the chicken gave a suggestion and say ham and egg. 
have my neck. And then the pig was like, no thanks. I will be committed and you only been involved. <laughs> so that is true. Um, that is so true. The chicken is very involved um, with uh, it acts, but the pit has to be committed by uh, dying. So another definition of commitment is that going from dated to marriage. Going from dated to marriage. You know, in, the, in a relationship when you are dated someone and of course you you are very involved but uh uh in a in a um a couple relationship it is different because you're not fully committed yet you're not uh fully committed to be a husband and a wife then there is a chance there's a lot of chance that you can make a judge you can adjust that or maybe if things aren't going the way you want it um you can still um break it but in a marriage is different in a marriage is different so being commitment being committed is like uh, going from dated to um, marriage so and one particular thing that I wanted to point out is that there is a victory in commitment there is a victory in commitment Jesus commit and he sacrificed himself on the cross and that is the victory that is the victory. That commitment was not easy. Jesus has to die for you and I and on the cross. And that is not easy, my friend. Let me let me just be straight. And but in the end, he ended up saving thousands uh, millions of people. And which is including me. If Jesus doesn't go through that, Jesus doesn't stick with the commitment, you and I we will not end up uh being saved today because of Jesus' commitment. There is a uh, victory. So I like what Keith Wheeler was saying. Commitment is you look like the things you are committed to. Let me repeat myself again. Commitment is you look like the things you are committed to. So what is it that you are committed to right now? So if you're committed to be a musician, just keep on playing and then be committed, consistent in that workflow. And one day I... And uh, you will turn up to become a musician. And if you wanted to be a pro uh, athlete, just being consistent, waking up in the morning, try your best, and then be um, in, in your follow up with your routine every day and do it, um, do it consistently. And one day, eventually, uh, you will become an athlete. There, because you become the things you're committed to. If you're committed to follow Jesus, you know. As I say earlier, we have to deny our emotion, and one day there's a, there's a lot of ch chance that we will look like uh, a Jesus. Or, in fact, we are called to be a Christian, so we are called. So Christians basically mean uh, little Christ. So we should look like Christ. We should have compassion. We should love one another. We should treat other as we should be. Uh, we ought to be treated. So um, the way we wanted to be treated. So. Yeah, so commitment is you look like the things you are committed to. So be uh, careful what you are committed to. And uh, if you already know what you want in life and committed to that things and ask the Holy Spirit, ask God uh, uh, to help you and to empower you to do uh, certain uh, that, that thing. So you don't want it to be, be a mediocre. So a mediocre is basically... Uh, the word that describes a rock climber who were involved, were not very uh, committed. So you don't want it to be, uh, you don't want to, you don't want to hang in the middle of the rock. So that word it used to describe a uh, climber who start the climb to top, but it is finish. They started the climb, but they're finished. So that is called mediocre. So you don't want it to be. Uh, a mediocre and in the bible it mentioned that in the book of revelation when john wrote the book to the uh the letter to the church of uh, ephesian um yeah um you don't want it to be a lukewarm you either be cold or hot and if you or if you are going to be uh, committed to something then uh, just do it uh, consistently you know, uh, being committed is not easy, especially if you are being committed to one thing. So 
so in in this point I, uh, another point that I wanted to point out is we need to have a narrow narrow focus we need to have a narrow focus so I like this quote for Tim Elmore and this is what he said leader can do anything but they can do everything leader can do anything but they cannot do everything I'm, I'm pretty sure you might have heard about this quote but uh, um, I just love this quote you know you can do anything but you can't do everything you know and then and the world will offer you many options but you cannot commit it to everything we have to have a narrow focus so so basically focus on the one thing that matters to us the most focus on the one thing that matter to us the most so what is it that you wanted to focus on focus on that one particular things every great leader in history uh, accomplished something memorable because of narrow focus they accomplished something because of narrow focus they can do a lot of things but they only focus on one things that you cannot uh being in two, two, three places and do. I mean, there are there are people in there. There are people in this world who will try to do that. But uh, if you wanted to be more effective, narrow your focus and focus on one things. Focus on one things. So I want to share with you about uh, this story of uh, John Wesley. So John Wesley was a very educated at Oxford, and he was. Um, a journalism he was politic he was uh not very knowledgeable in, in in the medical field but john wesley traveled 2000 and uh 2500 mile 2500 miles on horseback teaching organized church more than 50 years he was well educated in many different fields but he end up what narrow his focus, and his his focus was to teach the word and to organize the church. And later on, uh, John Wesley organized a church and founded the church called uh, the Methodist Church, the Methodist Church, and there are is widely spread it uh, all over the globe because of one person who narrow his focus. And even Jesus, a really great example, even Jesus, he could have done a lot of things. He could he could be a healer. He could be the greatest teacher in the history. But Jesus, that was not his focus. Although he, he did those things, he was the greatest healer. He was the greatest physician. He was the greatest teacher, the greatest preacher. But that was not his focus. When he come on this earth, he focused on one thing. He was committed to one thing, which is to be a lamb for you and I. And he has to offer himself to sacrifice himself and to die for you and I on the cross. And that's what he that's what Jesus did. Jesus did it for one thing. So my point is that if you are if you wanted to be committed, if you wanted to have the spirit of commitment. Just commit it to one thing. Don't do a lot of things. Just one thing. We are living in a time where people would, as I said earlier, people would choose convenience or, yeah, people would choose convenience over commitment. If you are in a workplace and if you don't feel, if you are in convenience, people will eventually leave and you will eventually leave and then find another place. If there's a grocery store that you don't want, you don't like, there's tons of store that you can go. If there's a, a, a certain website that you, a certain uh, organization that you don't like, if there's certain church that you don't like, you could go to a different church. There's tons of church. But that's not committed. You're not committed into that part. So I just want to share with you my story. Uh, I I am a person who is very uh, committed to the church. So I've been involved in a church called Myanmar Worship Center. And I've been in this church for uh, probably six or seven years. 
six or seven years for some this is this might not be a long time but for me uh i enjoy being being here and never in a million years i i would i i would think of being uh switching or changes to different church i'm not saying there uh, i'm not i'm I'm not facing any inconveniences or anything. I mean, there is, of course, churches, uh, there are different type of people. You will face inconvenience. And you often, sometimes you might find yourself being irritated by those who are around you. But if you're going to move on and go on to different churches just because of that problem, you're not committed. And my friend, when you're not committed, let me just be straight with you. You are not going anywhere you're not going anywhere but if you're committed to one place one day it when you're committed to uh, uh things or goal or um whatever whatever it is it is like you are planted a tree and that root is uprooted in the uh down uh is is rooted deep and down and one day uh it will uh, it will grow and it will bear fruit.